You know and I know everything happens in South Florida. In fact, you can bet on it. And many people have since the 1920s. Have you ever won a lottery before? I hit for 35000 at the casino. Really? Playing for 75 cents. Yeah, so I'm going to get some Powerball, too. State lottery officials boast Florida is among the top-selling Powerball states with at least $3 billion in sales and $1 billion in education funding since 2009. Lottery officials also say Florida has had the most winners in the nation, with more than $1.5 billion in prizes, including 10 jackpot winners, in a place where jackpots become too big to fit on billboards, which is feeding the frenzy. But right now they know that it's, there's more money out there, so, so it's, it's been doubling up, we're starting to double, <laughs> triple what they usually spend. I mean, we have our normal regular customers come every day to just sleep $100, $200 worth of time. Florida's love affair with Lady Luck dates back to the late 1800s. Law enforcers looked the other way or were paid to allow the operation of illegal casinos like the Colonial Inn, La Boheme, the Plantation, Club Green Acres, the Riverview Club, the It Club, the Beach Club, the Royal Palm Club, and Club Unique, now known as Cap's Place, a legitimate Lighthouse Point restaurant. These clubs all created jobs during the Great Depression. Broward Sheriff Walter Clark was among those who let slide the bootlegging, prostitution, and gambling that came with it. Because of his known associates, Clark was investigated, indicted, suspended, acquitted, and he died of leukemia within a year. If craps, roulette, blackjack, poker, horse racing, and chuck-a-luck weren't your speed, there was always bingo, bino, marco, tombala, housey housey, lotto, and bolita. All these games involved numbers because everyone loves math. Most were played on the down low, out of back rooms and bedrooms. The odds were better than Powerball, jackpots were tax-free, and none of the proceeds went to anyone but the winner, and the bookie who got the bigger share of the take. Unlike Bingo, that has had an almost as fanatical a following over the years, but was credited with saving churches, schools, social welfare programs, volunteer fire departments, police departments, and entire towns. Gaming industry experts say bingo ranks as the fourth largest form of gambling in the U.S. behind casinos, state lotteries, and horse racing. It was only a matter of time before all of these were legalized in Florida. But it was not an easy sell. Well, my job is to raise as many dollars as possible for education. Then there's a false perception out there that the lottery is the end-all, be-all, and will solve all the woes of education. The betterment of education was always part of the sales pitch, trumpeted by then-Lottery Secretary Paul and her successors since 1988. Well, my job is to raise as many dollars as possible. It's the legislator's job to spend those dollars. Then Broward School Superintendent William Leary was leery of the lottery. The tendency sometimes can be to, to use lottery money for education, but then other funds that used to go to education can occasionally be deflected to go into other areas. So we'd like to see the lottery funds supplement but not supplant uh, money in education. State officials say the lottery has contributed more than $29 billion to education and sent more than 725,000 students to college through the Bright Future Scholarship Program. The lottery says it reinvests 97% of its revenue back into Florida's economy through cash prizes, commissions to more than 13,000 retailers, and to education. And since 1988, Florida Lottery Games have paid more than $48 billion in prizes and made more than 1,800 people millionaires. The odds of winning a lottery, something like the Powerball, about 300 million to one. You've got better odds of being attacked by a shark, 11 and a half million to one. Or being in a plane crash, 11 million to one. Or being struck by lightning, a million to one. And even if you do win, the Wall Street Journal reports 70% of winners end up going broke. Don't say I didn't warn you. With another chapter of South Florida's dubious history, I'm Wayne Rooston for The Sun Sentinel.